In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to condense a logarithm into a single logarithm. The instructions are probably going to say something like this. It'll say, condense the expression to the logarithm of a single quantity. So really what they're saying is they only want this LOG to be written out once, or in this case, LN, right? Natural log. And so what I have to do is I have to use the product rule. I have to use the, the quotient rule. I've got to use the power rules. I've got to use those rules in order to condense these things. So I'm really working backwards from the expansion that I did in the last video. First step is to do this. I see that I have a one-half out in front, and I know really what that means is I've got x to the one-half power in here, right? I took that one-half and I dropped it down in front earlier. So if I'm going to work backwards then, maybe I rewrite this as log base 8 of x to the one-half. And then I'm going to add then log base 8 of x plus 1, and I know that this 3 means I'm really cubing the x plus 1. Next step is I'm going to take, if I had a, pro, a plus sign here, that means I can take it and rewrite it using the product rule. I can take and rewrite it this as a single logarithm. And inside that logarithm, I'm going to take x to the 1 half times x plus 1 to the third. So I'm really just working backwards of what I did in the last video. And the last thing is this, because I know what x to the 1 half is, I think it would be preferable to write your answer as log base 8 of the square root of x, that's x to the 1 half, times x plus 1 cubed. And now we have a single logarithm, base 8, and everything else is inside there. Let's do a second example. What if I had 2 times the natural log of x plus 2 squared minus the log of x? Well, the first thing, oh, that shouldn't be squared. I'm jumping ahead of myself. 2 times the natural log of x plus 2 minus the natural log of x. Sorry, I was looking at my notes and I already went a step forward. See, the 2, I know, can be written up as the exponent, right? So I can say the natural log of x plus 2 squared minus the natural log of x. That's the same thing. So now I've got the 2 up front instead, up top. Because I see a subtraction sign here, I know from the quotient, quotient rule that I can rewrite this as a single logarithm and there's going to be a fraction and the x is going to go on the bottom of the fraction. So I can rewrite this as the natural log of x plus 2 squared all over x. And I'm done. That's it. If I want to put square brackets around this, by the way, you can. It doesn't really matter. It means the same thing. There we go. Last problem, maybe the most difficult one. See, there's a lot of confusion here. Do I take the one-third and do I distribute to each one, or do I wait until the end, or, or does that go as a power? What do we do with that? And see, the answer is it doesn't really matter, to be honest. For the sake of this problem, I'm going to go ahead and leave the one-third out because I don't like working with fractions. I'm going to save that for the very end. I'm going to combine the stuff in the middle first and then take the one-third, and I'm going, to, I'm going to work with it later. But it doesn't really matter if you put it in now. See, no, first of all, I see that I've got a plus sign in the middle, and that means that I've got a product going on if I want to rewrite this as a single logarithm. So I'm going to keep the one-third out, and I'm going to combine the stuff on the inside to say this, log base 2 of x times x minus 4. I'm going to go ahead and change this to a square bracket. Probably should have done that to begin with. And so this is what I have so far. This plus became a single product inside the parentheses. And so, my last step is this. I know that really this one-third out front means that I'm raising all the stuff here to the one-third power. I've already got a single logarithm. And so my final answer is going to be log base 2 of one-third power. That's the same thing as a cube root. So I'm going to go ahead and write that as the cube root of x times x minus 4. And it turns out that this is the same exact thing as what I started with. If that makes sense, then you're ready to go on and do some homework problems.